What's going on everybody, it's Game Unboxing Reviews here, and welcome back to another LEGO The Incredibles news update. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. We're going to be talking about the characters you can expect to see in the game, some of their combat abilities, some of their team-up moves, the character customizer, and lots more. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so first up, let's talk voice actors. Now, when asked if all of the original voice actors will be reprising their roles for this game, executive producer on the game Nick Rick said that they got back as many of the voice talent as they could, and has assured us that the game will feature a great voice cast. Personally, I think it's at least safe to say that Brad Bird is reprising the role of Edna Mode, as we do hear him do her voice in the game's announcement trailer. So it'll be interesting to see just how many of the original cast they were able to bring back into this game game. Next up, let's talk about character abilities. Now, Elastigirl is a character we don't know much about yet. Obviously, you'd expect her to be able to stretch, punch, and kick enemies. But one thing that we do know that is confirmed is that Helen can transform into a boat, plane, and lots more things. Now, personally, I'm really happy to hear this because recently, one of my favorite things about the LEGO video games has been the stretchy characters. You know, Mr. Fantastic, Plastic Man, Kamala Khan. So to see that they're doing the same thing with Elastigirl is such awesome news. You know, all those characters could turn into these weird and wacky things, and it just made them to be such hilarious and fun characters to play as. So I, for one, can't wait to play as Elastigirl in this game. Now, Violet, on the other hand, is very different because she will actually evolve through the story. So as she progresses and eventually overcomes her shyness, her powers will become available. But obviously, once you complete the story, you can use all of Violet's powers at any time during free play. Now, another character that will evolve through the story is Jack-Jack. So in story mode, Jack-Jack's powers are woven into the fabric of the level. His powers are unlocked for the player as appropriate, but in free play, there is no holding back. You're free to use every single one of Jack-Jack's powers as much as you want. And boy, does he have a lot of them. He can teleport, move matter, duplicate himself, shoot laser beams from his eyes, turn into solid iron, flame on, and even transform into the big, creepy red monster that we see near the end of the first Incredibles movie. And all of that news right there, that to me shows that Jack-Jack is going to be the most fun and entertaining character to play as in this entire game. I mean, I can't believe they've given him every single ability you see in the first Incredibles movie. And I bet they're not even forgetting that mini animated short where he's with the babysitter. I bet they're going to add all of those abilities that he had in there as well. And of course, the sequel. We don't even know what powers Jack-Jack showcases in The Incredibles 2. I bet he has a lot of other tricks up his sleeve that we don't know about yet. And I would imagine all of those abilities that you see in that movie will also be added to the character as well. So yes, I absolutely cannot wait to play as Jack-Jack in this game. He sounds like he's going to be an absolute blast to run around with. Now, one of the new features in the LEGO Incredibles video game is family builds. So the different family members can all combine together and find these incredibly rare bricks called Incredibricks that they create these enormous LEGO structures. That's pretty cool. At first, I thought they would probably be red bricks, but I think it's something else entirely. So it's nice to have a new brick type in this game. Now, team-up moves are something that we've started seeing a lot in the LEGO video games recently, and it is absolutely returning in LEGO the Incredibles video game, but this time around you'll be able to team up with not just two, but sometimes three and even four characters. For instance, like we see in the first movie, you can apparently team up Dash with Violet to allow him to run in a psionic sphere, which then of course allows Dash to run across water. The game's executive producer Nick Ricks also gave an example where at one point in the game, the team is faced with a waterfall with a secret entrance behind it. Now just inside the entrance is an array of security systems meant to cut down any trespassers. So combining each family member's powers is the only way through. So Dash, who can swim fast enough upstream, can get in behind the waterfall, but the only way to stop the defenses is to use Violet's shield. But of course, she can't swim fast enough, so you need Elastigirl. Now she can twist her body into a number of different shapes and useful tools, including, in this case, a boat. Helen can then be pushed by Dash, who has sufficient power to push against the current, whilst at the same time, Violet shields them all. So you can really create these amazing team-ups where the entire family is involved, which is really, really cool. 
Now, of course, Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, Dash, Violet, Jack-Jack, and even Frozone will be in this game. But who else can we expect to see as playable characters? Well, if you remember in the first movie, we see supers at Bob and Helen's wedding, supers that the Omnidroids defeated, and much more. Now, when the folks at TT Fusion actually went to Pixar, they were really surprised to find out that the team behind the first Incredibles movie already had details on each character's mannerisms, characteristics, strengths, and weaknesses. So despite barely getting a glimpse at the Glory Age Supers in the first movie, it has now been confirmed that all of those Glory Age superheroes will populate the character grid, which is really exciting news. I love the fact that they're taking these characters that you barely see in the background and fleshing them out, giving them, you know, characteristics, abilities, and all that good stuff. I personally cannot wait to play as all of the Glory Age Supers in this game, because there's some really cool ones hidden in the first Incredibles movie. We're also going to see characters from the Incredibles comic book series in the game, including Gazer Beam, a superhero who could generate laser blasts from his eyes, and is said to have quite a prominent part in this game. Now during an interview with IGN, Nick Ricks also teased Storm Aside, a superhero with the ability to absorb and emit vapors of various properties, such as carbon dioxide, to extinguish flames. She could also fly when powered through vapor emission. Now while Nick couldn't go into detail on the character's super and villains from the new movie, he has confirmed that we can expect to see a really crammed full character grid with loads of different cool characters and abilities. Now with LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, we got the addition of a brand new, very impressive character customizer. And you'll be very happy to hear that yes, LEGO The Incredibles will also feature a character customizer. However, I'm not sure if it's going to be like the one we see in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 or the one we see in the LEGO Ninjago movie video game. But it does say on the official site, modify your character's appearance and abilities using a customizer themed to Edna E. Mode, the bombastic fashion designer of superhero outfits. So it sounds like you're at least going to be able to choose, you know, your character's abilities and the costume. But it'll be interesting to see if they add any new abilities since LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, or if it's just going to be exactly the same as LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2's character creator. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm just really glad to hear that the game is going to have a character customizer. And last but most certainly not least, the final thing we need to talk about is, of course, Pixar characters. So when asked if we're going to see any other Pixar characters appearing in the game as Easter eggs or in the free play sections, Nick Rick said that all he can say is that's something that fits really well with what the team at TT Fusion have done in the past. So there has been something of a meeting of the minds there. Very interesting response there. You know, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see other Pixar characters in this game because, of course, it's not a Lego Pixar game. It's a Lego Incredibles game. However, I can't deny how amazing it would be to be able to run around the city in The Incredibles as Buzz Lightyear or Woody or something like that. You know, if they have actually added more Pixar characters as playable characters or even if they're just, you know, appearances in the cutscenes, maybe they pop up in the background or they're in, you know, a Lego newspaper or something like that. That would be really cool, but for now, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to happen or not. But of course, it would be an incredible addition to an already amazing game. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Now, if LEGO The Incredibles does have Pixar characters, which Pixar characters outside of The Incredibles franchise would you like to see in the game? Personally, for me, like I already said, I'm a massive fan of Toy Story, so I would love to be able to run around with Buzz Lightyear and Woody and fight crime in the city. That just sounds like a ton of fun. But of course, we will just have to wait and see. Anyway guys, as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos real soon, and as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.